Hi, everyone. So uh, in this video, let's try to understand a little bit about option Greeks um, using GameStop options as an example and uh, using CFA level two knowledge. So full disclosure, I've not traded options before, and this is just pure, very basic textbook knowledge. So only for people who don't really understand options like me. So first we have Delta, which is defined as the change in the value of the, of the in instrument, giving a small change in the value of stock, holding everything else is constant. So what we need to know to really help with our understanding is um, the Delta will move towards one if the call is in the money and the Delta will move towards zero if the call is out of money. So. When the call is deep in the money, as the stock price increases, the call options value increases almost one to one with the increase to stock price, assuming everything else is constant. So um, let's look at an example. We have here um, call option with $20 strike price, which is deeply in the money right now as the stock is around $300. Uh, it's Delta is one. So uh, as the stock, uh, stock price goes up by one, the option also goes up by one. And uh, another example we can look at is like $295 and um, the $330 option. And um, as it, they're not deeply in the money, uh, like it's, it's much lower, uh, we see the Delta being much lower. So um, for, um, for, the put, um, for the Delta of put options, it's just gonna be negative and um, pretty much the same. And the way we can quickly get um, Delta of put option is just using Delta of call option minus one. And uh, next we have Gamma which is defined as the changing options delta, giving a small change in the value of the underlying stock, holding everything else is constant. So gamma is always gonna be non-negative. And the reason we need gamma is if we're just gonna, gonna get approximation of call op, call of like options purely based on delta is not very accurate as we can see here. Um, but if we use a combination of call of delta and also gamma, it gives a much better approximation. So gamma is, as a, the easy way to understand it, is it's a curvature of the priority expiration curve. And um, when gamma is small, delta is not sensitive to, to the change of the underlying stock and can give a pretty good approximation. And uh, when gamma is large, delta is very sensitive to change in the value of the underlying stock and cannot give good approximation. So here, um, when when Delta can give a pretty good approximation, which is like when Delta is one. And here we see gamma is being zero. And when Delta cannot give a pretty good approximation, we see um, Delta here as like 0 0.65 and we see gamma being larger than the one when Delta was one. So just basic, basic stuff helps you understand. I'm not gonna dive too deep into it. And uh, next we have theta, which is defined as the change in the value of an option given small change in calendar time. And this Greek is different from all other Greeks based on the fact that this is the only Greek that does not involve any uncertainty. Um, the calendar time is just always gonna go on and um, it's negative for both calls and puts. And it's just because when, when there's less time we have for the option, the less valuable it is. And uh, further, the rate which option value decreases accelerates as time to expiration decreases. So we, from this graph, I can really see a steep um, acceleration. And uh, yeah, let's look at some examples. So um, for this option, we have um, expiring in April. It's theta is negative um, zero, a point eight one. And um, for, let's look at another option that one was in April, this one's in March and theta is um, negative one. And uh, if we were to look at another one for February 5th, it's really close to, um, it's only like less than a week and the theta is much larger at um, negative 2.6. Yeah. And uh, next we have Vega, which measures the sensitivity of the value of an option to changes in the volatility of the underlying stock. And what's important to know is Vega is based on a parameter that's not observable in the market. It's based on future volatility, which we do not know. So this is why when we look at all the option chains, Vega is always gonna be zero. At least that's what I think, <laughs> just based on textbook knowledge. And uh, next we have Rho, 
which measures the sensitivity of the price and option to small changes in the risk-free rate. So how does it come in play, the risk-free rate and option prices? Um, let's, um, let's imagine like you, have, you wanna buy $1,000 worth of stock. If we're just purchasing the, the stock outright, you will spend all that $1,000. But if you're using option, let's say you use $10 of option to get a $1,000 worth of stock, the rest of the $990, you can uh, risk-free, you can use the risk-free rate to get more money. And so the higher the risk-free rate, the higher the demand for options, because you can, uh, you can potentially get more. And um, yeah, that's just one way to see it. And uh, we can look at row. Uh, what's also important to understand is both call and put options on most assets are not very sensitive to changes in the risk-free rate. So um, here we see row S point, only being 0 0.019. And uh, another one, for, so when we look at the February 5th option of $295, the row here is only 0 0.029 uh, versus like theta, which is like measures how sensitive it is to time is that negative 2.6. So obviously like theta plays a much bigger role than role in this case. So uh, this is pretty much it. Just basic knowledge about uh, option Greeks and um, to, and then we look at the example of GameStop stocks uh, options. Um, I'm also gonna do an op another video regarding GameStop using uh, Soros reflexivity theory, which I think will be really interesting. And uh, if you're interested, um, yeah, check out my other videos. Take care.